Hello children, welcome to Diksha Online Classes. Today's topic, Matrices and Determinants, Lecture 8. Last lecture, we had uh, the definition of a determinant, properties of determinants and uh, one or two problems on properties of determinant. Okay, today's uh, lecture, we continue with the properties of determinants and uh, corresponding problems. In continuation of uh, the properties, the next property, if a determinant D becomes 0 on putting x is equal to alpha, then we say that x minus alpha is a factor of D. What is the meaning of it? It means I would uh, consider a determinant as a function of x. I would consider the determinant as a function of x. And if I say that determinant as a function of x, it is a polynomial function. Let's say 1 x x square 1 a a square 1 b b square. I would uh, consider this as a function of x a determinant. In this determinant if I substitute x is equals to a if x is equals to a then R1, the first row, will be the same as the second row. By the property of the determinant, definitely the determinant has to be 0. So, I would say x minus a is a factor of delta. It is as similar as a factor theorem in algebra. In the same lines, I can also substitute x is equals to b. Then I would say that r1 is equals r3 and thereby delta is equals 0 says that x minus b is a factor of delta. So that is about the first concept. If I substitute x is equals alpha in a determinant Okay, and if the value of the determinant is 0, then x minus alpha is a factor of uh, the determinant. In continuation, the next, uh, cons next property, by substituting x is equal to alpha, if all the rows are identical, no doubt the determinant will be 0 when the, all the rows are uh, identically equal. So, by substituting x is equal to alpha, if all the rows are identical, then x minus alpha whole square would be the factor of the determinant. x minus alpha whole square is the factor of the determinant. So, for example, I consider it as an example, I say x11, 1, 1x1, 1, 1, 1x. We do not know what is the value of this uh, determinant. Let me expand this one. So, x multiplied by x square minus 1 minus 1 multiplied by. So, 1 multiplied by x minus 1 plus 1 multiplied by 1 minus x. Why not you take up the common factor x minus 1? It becomes x into x plus 1 because this can be written as x minus 1 into x plus 1. 1 x minus 1 you can have a common Remaining x plus 1 as it is will be there. x minus next uh, common factor. Here, if you take x minus 1 common factor, you get minus 1 here because it is 1 minus x here. And when you factorize this one, and this is clearly x square plus x minus 2 on factorizing, you would be getting this one as x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 2. Yeah, the product is this one. Clearly, you can see that uh, 
the value of the determinant is nothing but x minus and whole square into x plus 2. Now, in this uh, determinant as a function of uh, x, if I substitute x is equals to 1, then first row, second row and third row, all the three rows are identically equal. And therefore, by the property that x minus 1 whole square would be the factor of the determinant. Clearly, you could see that uh, the normal expansion of this determinant itself is nothing but x minus alpha whole square into x plus 2 means that x minus 2 whole square is a factor of the determinant. So, the property has been proved. Okay? Right. Now, I shall proceed to next property. If A comma B are any two square matrices of order N, then determinant of A B is equals to that A into that B. If A comma B are any two matrices of a same order, square matrices of same order, then determinant of A B. So A B is equals to that A into that B. I would uh, take up as an example. A is equals to let's say 1, 2, 2, 1 and B matrix is equals to 3, 1, 2, 1. Let me take up the product of the two matrices A into B. So 1, 2, 2, 1 multiply by 3, 1, 2, 1. The product is a 2 by 2 matrix. You will be getting 3 plus 4, 7. So first row, first column 3 plus 4. First row, second column, 1 plus 2, 3. Second row, first column, 6 plus 2, 8. And second row, second column, 2 plus 1, 3. This is AB matrix. Let me evaluate determinant of AB. Determinant of AB. That is equal to determinant of 7, 3, 8, 3. That is equal to 21 minus 24, which is equals to minus 3. Let me evaluate a determinant of A, which is equals to determinant of 1, 2, 2, 1. And that is equals to 1 minus 4 minus 3. Whereas the determinant of B is equals to determinant of 3, 1, 2, 1. That equals to 3 minus 2, which is equals to 1. Now, the product of these two, debt A multiplied by debt B, and that is equals to minus 3, which is the same as determinant of AB. So, determinant of AB is equals to debt of A into B. So, determinant of AB is equals to debt A multiplied by debt A into debt B. The next property follows this property. It's a simple if A is any square matrix of order N and alpha is an integer, then determinant of A power alpha equals to the A to the power of alpha. It follows this property. Let's say, for example, if I take up A to the power of alpha, where alpha is an integer value, counting number, is nothing but A multiply by A multiply by A alpha times you are multiplying it so debt a debt a to the power of alpha is equal to a into a into a and so on alpha times i am taking multiplication so determinant of a power alpha is nothing but determinant of a into a and so on into a according to the previous uh, property the product of two determinants, the determinant of the product can be written as product of determinants. So, this can be written as debt A into debt A into debt A into debt A alpha times. Clearly, this product is a product of the alpha numbers. Det, determinant of A power alpha is equal to debt A to the power of alpha. That's about the another property. So these are the few, few properties uh, of the determinants.
now we shall start with the problems and these problems using the properties of the determinants how do you solve it we will see the first one example 1 0 a minus b 0 a minus b minus a 0 minus c and b c 0 we would like to find the determinant value of this one clearly observe that one in this uh, determinant of a square matrix the diagonal elements are zeros at the same time a 1 2 element is equals to minus of a 2 1 element a 1 3 equals to minus a 3 1 element a 2 3 element is minus a 3 2 element so the given the determinant of the matrix is nothing but actually it is the determinant determinant of a skew symmetric matrix determinant of a skew symmetric matrix and this is of odd order we know from the basic property of the determinant the determinant of a skew symmetric matrix of odd order definitely be zero we proved already determinant of a skew symmetric matrix of odd order is equals to zero so the answer for this determinant is equals to zero i can also take up here as like this one because you know a skew symmetric matrix means if a is a skew symmetric matrix then a transpose is equals to minus a then determinant of a transpose is equal to determinant of minus a but we know the determinant of a transpose is same as the determinant a and this minus 1 this is a matrix of order 3 minus 1 to the power of 3 multiplied by det a so det a is equals to minus det a and the 2 times of det a equals 0 which implies determinant of a is equal to 0 that's a proof okay so the determinant of a skew symmetric matrix of odd order definitely be zero now proceeding to the next example observe very carefully here show that the determinant is equals to something and that value is equal to abc plus bc plus ea plus ab of course uh, the second portion by multiplying abc to this particular product the whole thing we can get it the second part so the second part is very simple so only thing is first part we need to prove it let's see so i consider the given determinant as a delta 1 plus a so 1 1 1 1 plus b 1 1 1 1 plus c as we have here 1 by a 1 by b 1 by c okay as a factors as a terms uh, why not you take out a b c common from the first row second row third row as uh, delta is uh, just a number if i take out uh, a number common a from the determinant uh, I should see the value should not be changed. If A, I am taking common from the first row of the determinant, then I can write this one as 1 by A plus 1, 1 by A and 1 by A. Okay. In the same lines, if I am taking B common from the second row, I don't have 1 by, I mean, B here. So, but when I take out common, then I should write here 1 by B, so that when you multiply here, B into 1 by B will become 1. So, no change in the value. Similarly, if I am taking a B common from the second row, second column, so it will be getting 
1 by b plus 1 and here 1 by b. In the same lines, uh, third row, from the third row, you take up c common. You get it 1 by c, 1 by c, 1 by c plus 1. 1 by c, 1 by c and 1 by c plus 1. Now, apply the property of the determinant. We know the determinant value does not change by adding the scalar multiples of elements of a row with the another row. So, two rows can be added or two columns can be added. The determinant will not be changed. In the same lines, by using that property, to get the result 1 by a, 1 plus 1 by a, 1 by b, 1 by c, observe very carefully from the first column. You have 1 by a plus 1, 1 by b, 1 by c. And even in the second column also, 1 plus 1 by a, 1 by b, 1 by c. And even in the third column also, you have the same number. So, if I can have an addition of all these values, you will be getting the term which is 1 plus 1 by A plus 1 by B plus 1 by C. So, what I do? I apply the property by the addition of R1, R2 and R3. I add all the rows to get that result 1 plus 1 by A plus 1 by B plus 1 by C. Where do I keep this result? I should keep it in the determinant, am I right? But you add up. It means you are adding, so the, thereby you will be getting a number. So let me keep all these numbers. If I add the first column elements, okay, from each row, I will be getting a number. I will keep it in the first row itself. It means I would like to change the only the first row elements by adding first row, second row, third row elements by adding R2, R3 to the first row. I apply this property. Let me check what will be the value you have got it. So, keep A, B, C as it is and then 1 plus 1 by A, this number, plus 1 by B, plus 1 by C. That becomes 1 plus 1 by A plus 1 by B plus 1 by C. I am keeping it in the first row. Let's write down the property like this and so that uh, you are changing R1 implies means nothing but you are changing R1. Okay, how do you are changing? I am explaining over here. It is R1 plus R2 plus R3 by adding all these rows and keep it in uh, R1. So, in the same lines, let me add. So, 1 by A. 1 plus 1 by B plus 1 by C. That gives you 1 plus 1 by A plus 1 by B plus 1 by C. In the same lines, you will be getting even the third row, third column also. 1 plus 1 by A plus 1 by B plus 1 by C. And I do not change the other elements. Like 1 by B, 1 plus 1 by B, 1 by B. 1 by C. 1 by C, 1 plus 1 by C. Hope you understood the logic of this one. Now we have a property that if in a row, if every number, every number in a particular row or the multiple of a number, you can take out that number. So that determinant can be written as that number of times of the determinant. So, A, B, C multiply by 1 plus 1 by A plus 1 by B plus 1 by C is a common number. Multiply by the remaining determinant. If I take out this number, I will be getting 1 here. So, 1 by B, 1 by C. 1, 1 by B plus 1, 1 by C. 1, 1 by B, 1 by C plus 1. Right? I am taking 
1 plus 1 by a plus 1 by b plus 1 by c common. Now, I would proceed one more property here to simplify the problem. Whenever you find 1, 1, 1 in the row wise, use this condition. So that easy to evaluate the determinant and you can simplify. You can as well here itself expansion also gives you answer but still you can apply the property here. With the help of one particular one, we make this number 0, this number 0, this number 0, this number to be 0. As by subtracting column wise, I would change the C to, okay, I would uh, change the C to value as the second column elements, I will change by subtracting first column elements, thereby will be getting 1 minus 1, 0, 1 by B plus 1 minus 1 by B, 1 by C minus 1 by C. In the same lines, I would change C3 also, C3 minus C1. Applying these properties on the determinant, I will be getting delta is equals to ABC multiplied by 1 plus 1 by A plus 1 by B plus 1 by C into as we are changing C2, C3, no change in the first column 1, 1 by B, 1 by C. 1, 1 by B, 1 by C. And in the second column, C2 minus C1. Subtracting it, 1 minus 1 would become 0. And 1 by B plus 1 minus 1 by B, that will be 1. And 1 by C minus 1 by C, this will be 0. In the same way, you can check the other elements in the third column, C3 minus C1, 1 minus 1, 0, 1 by B minus 1 by B, 0, 1 by C plus 1 minus 1 by C will become 1. And clearly we could see that this is a determinant wherein the elements above this diagonal are zeros. So, the value of the determinant is a product of diagonal elements. Clearly, the answer for this one is nothing but ABC into 1 plus 1 by A plus 1 by B plus 1 by C multiply by 1. This is our required result. Hope you understood the problem. So, this is how we calculate the answer for this one. So, in this one, keep in mind whenever you find 1, 1, 1, in any particular row, then use the concept C2 minus C1, C3 minus C1. The same concept you can apply when you find vertically 1, 1, 1 also comes up. We will see in the next problem. It may come and we will apply and we will do it. Coming to the example 3, A square plus 1, AB, AC, BA, B square plus 1, BC, CA, CB, C square plus 1. Now observe carefully, see, when you apply the property of the determinant, directly calculation is a little typical. So we shall apply the property of the determinant and uh, try to simplify the problem, easy way to get the answer, the technique. Here, as we have a square plus b square plus c square, so the terms of second degree here, this is A, B, A, C, B, C are there. Similarly, B, A, C, A and C, B are there. We don't have A into A, which is A square, B into B, B square, C into C. It would be better first we convert these uh, second order elements into this as like A square, B square, C square. So for that, I use the concept like this. I consider the determinant as determinant is equals to a square plus 1 ab ac ba b square plus 1 and bc ca cb c square plus 1 
here I would follow one technique here that uh, a technique is like this one delta as I was telling you that uh, is just a number which is a determinant is a number an expansion which gives us just a number to convert this a b b c c a terms in terms of a square b square c square what i do is like this one i would multiply okay <clears throat> i would multiply the first row by an element a since it is a number the value should not be changed at the same time i would divide by a and i multiply a to the elements of the first row the value will not be changed. A multiply by a square plus 1. A multiply by a b a square b. And this is a square c. I am just multiplying a to the first row. At the same time, I am dividing it. So, the value will not be changed. In the same lines, I would divide by b <coughs> and multiply b to every element of the second row. So, this is a b square a b multiplied by b square plus 1 and b square c. In the same way, I would divide c and multiply c to the third row. c square a, c square b, c multiplied by c square plus 1. Now observe carefully, column wise, in the first column, don't you find a common number A in the second column, common number B and in the third column, there is a common number C. So, why need to take out uh, that ABC values? So, so, I would take out uh, ABC here. Thereby, I will be getting the determinant is equals to. So, denominator ABC, A common from the first column if I take out what else remaining from the first column a into a square plus 1 that becomes a square plus 1 b square multiplied by a if I take out a common you will be getting only b square similarly the third element will become c square from the second column if I take b common what else remaining a square b square plus 1 and the c square and from the third column c if you take up common a square b square and the c square plus 1 now you could see that uh, the same determinant uh, original one has been converted into a determinant wherein that a b b c c a are converted in terms of a square b square and c square now let us proceed for the proof of this i need to get uh, a square plus b square plus c square plus 1. If you observe column wise here, you have 1 plus a square, b square, c square. Addition will be giving us 1 plus a square plus b square, the required result. So, I would add the numbers column wise in every row. So, I would change the first row by the property that R 1 plus R 2 plus R 3, adding second row, third row to the first property first row thereby the determinant will be giving us like this 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square same thing here also 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square and here also 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square right now, we'll be keeping the other elements as it is b square c square, b square plus 1 c square and b square c square plus 1. Now, what do you observe from this one? 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square, 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square and 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square. You have in one particular row, Every element is a multiple of 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square. Why don't you write the determinant as the product of that number? 
So determinant can be written as 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square. If we have a common, what is remaining in the first row? 1, 1, 1. So you'll be getting 1, 1, 1. So it is b square, b square plus 1, b square. c square, c square and c square plus 1. We have got now the first row elements are 1, 1, 1. As I told you in the last problem, if you have this one, you can just directly apply by changing the second column and third column elements by subtracting first column elements from the second column and first column elements from the third column. C2 minus C3, C2 minus C1 and C3 minus C1. Thereby, you get the determinant as 1 plus A square plus b square plus c square multiply by first column no change only second and third column 1 b square c square 1 minus 1 0 b square plus 1 minus b square 1 and 0 and this is 0 0 1 again this is a determinant upper diagonal elements are zeros so, so the value of this determinant is a product of diagonal elements is nothing but 1 and that is equals to 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square multiply by 1. This is how we try to get the result of the determinant. Hope you understood the logic of this one. This is your answer. This is an example 3. Let's proceed to the next example. Example 4. Prove that 1xx cube, 1yy cube, 1zz cube is equal to x minus y, y minus z, z minus x multiplied by x plus y plus z. Expanding the determinant and simplifying is a little typical one. So better we apply the property of uh, the determinant and then we simplify the problems here. Let me take up the determinant which is a 1x x cube. So delta is equals to determinant 1x x cube, 1y y cube and 1z z cube. This is uh, the given determinant. Now as I told you that one. If you have 1, 1, 1, in a row wise, I said apply C2 minus C1 and C3 minus C1 and make the other two numbers as zeros so, so that determinant would become very simple to expansion. Similar way, here also we try to make up the second and third row elements of 1 as a 0 with the help of the first row 1. By the property that I would like to change R2 as R2 minus R1 and apply the property R3 minus R1. From the property of uh, the determinant, subtracting of elements of any row from another row doesn't alter its value. Okay, therefore, thereby, I'll be getting the determinant value like this. I am changing only R2, R3, no change in the first row. So, how do I change? R2 minus R3, 1 minus 1, 0, y minus x, y cube minus x cube, 0, z minus x, and z cube minus x cube. Keeping the first row elements as it is. Now we shall apply the property of a determinant. If uh, elements of one particular row are multiples of k, then I can see the determinant can be written as k times of that particular determinant taken k common value. So I say that here from the second row, why not you take out uh, y minus x common by factorizing it, uh, the determinant. Uh, 
can be written as from the second row y minus x from the third row z minus x common factor we know that a cube minus b cube can be written as a minus b multiply by a square plus a b plus b square using this formula in this determinant if i take out common y minus x from the second row and z minus x from the third row and you get the determinant as 1 x x cube 0 here 1 and y cube minus x cube factorizing it to y minus x you have taken common from this one okay remaining you get it y square plus x y plus x square similarly z minus x taken common 0 1 and z square plus z x and plus x square okay now i have here 1 and 1 it will be more simple for me even if you can have make up this element to be 0 so that the diagonally elements below the diagonal are zeros will be product of diagonal elements for that sake i'll make this number to be 0 that means i would like to change r3 sorry r3 as r3 minus r2 thereby the determinant can be written as y minus x multiply by z minus x multiply by okay 1 x x cube no change in the first row no change in the second row y square plus x y plus x square and the third row will be changing by subtracting elements of second row from the third row 0 minus 0 0 1 minus 1 0 here careful subtracting don't you see that x square gets cancelled here and from here it is z square minus y square z square minus y square plus z x minus x y z x minus x y so from this one clearly could see that it is the product of the diagonal elements now before uh, expanding this determinant i would like to check once you see from here isn't it z minus y is a common factor and here x common if we take up z minus y common factor so i can write delta is equals to y minus x multiply by z minus x multiply by so 1 x x cube so 0 1 so y square plus x y plus x square 0 0 from here z minus y when you take up common z minus y if i can have a common which is nothing but actually z plus y plus x this is plus x multiplied by z minus y now you can have z minus y common factor y minus x multiply by z minus x multiply by z minus y if we can have a common sorry this is z square minus y square so 1 x x cube 0 1 y square plus x y plus x square and 0 0 this is x plus y plus z will become this will become z plus y plus x and the product of the diagonal elements is nothing but x plus y plus z taken minus common from here minus 1 multiply by x minus y into z minus x here also minus 1 if you can have a common y minus z multiply by x plus y plus z this minus minus will become plus and that gives us the result here so that is our required answer x minus y y minus z z minus x into x plus y plus z 
Hope you understood the logic of this problem. So whenever you find 1, 1, 1 here, so take a part 2 minus R1, R3 minus R1 will be simple to simplify the problem. Let's proceed to the example 5. One other typical example. It's also not uh, difficult to get it. It's uh, so simple only. I try to get it answer like this. I have the first column B plus C. Let me write down first uh, the determinant. The determinant is equals to B plus C, C plus A, A plus B. Q plus R. So Q plus R, R plus P and P plus Q. Y plus Z, Z plus X and X plus Y. And that should be equal to twice of ABC, PQR, XYZ. Now, I should uh, get uh, a single term over here. I'll do it one thing. Take the first column and the second column. Add them. You see in the first row, you see that it is C plus A and A plus B. Addition of them is nothing but A, B, B plus C plus 2A. 2A plus B plus C. And when you subtract from the first column, automatically you get minus 2a. b and c will be getting cancelled. So I use the concept of subtracting c2 plus c3 from c1. Thereby I would change c1. I would change the first column elements by the property c1 minus of c2 plus c3 add c2 and c3 and then subtract from c1 thereby you would be getting determinant is equals to you see that c plus a plus a plus b subtracting from here you would be getting minus 2a in the same way r plus p plus p plus q will be getting 2p plus q plus r subtracting from here minus 2p and z plus x and x plus y addition is 2x. So you get it minus 2x because y and z gets cancelled. And here c plus a as it is you keep it as it is r plus p z plus x and a plus b p plus q and x plus y. Keep the other columns as it is. We required to show that uh, the result is twice of the determinant. So why don't you consider two common from the first column? Do not take out minus sign right now. Let us let me keep this minus sign as it is. Only two if I can have a common multiply by minus a minus p minus x c plus a r plus p z plus x so, which is A plus B, P plus Q and X plus Y. Now, I hope it's very simple to prove it. By adding this one to the second column by addition of this one, A would be getting cancelled, P cancel and X cancel. Same way by adding this to this one, a gets cancelled, A, P, X gets cancelled and simplifies the problem very easily. So, I apply by changing C2 and C3. The columns will be changed by apply the property C2 plus C1 and C3 plus C1. And that gives us uh, the value of the determinant. It is uh, twice keeping the first one as it is, the first column. You are changing second column and third column by adding the first column to the second and third one. APX gets cancelled, will be remaining. APX gets cancelled. So that C, R and Z. And here you get it B, 
Q and Y. We know from the property that okay, as uh, minus 1 is in the first column, there is a common. So, I can have one minus 1 common. And interchanging this uh, column and this column, you get one minus sign. We know from the property of the determinant interchanging two rows or two columns results in change of the sign of the determinant. So, I would get one minus sign here. So, delta is equals to twice one minus from the first column minus one from the first column. And by interchanging the two columns, C2, C3, one more minus sign. That means interchanging C2 and C3. You will be getting the determinant A, P, X as it is. And this B, Q, Y comes as a second column. B, Q, Y and C, R, okay, of course, Z is the third column. And minus 1 into minus 1 will become plus. You get the required answer as like this one. So, it is twice. A, B, C, P, Q, R and X, Y, Z. A, B, C, P, Q, R, X, Y, Z multiply by 2. Hope it's clear. Right. Let's proceed to the one more example. A, 1 A, A square, 1 B, B square, 1 C, C square. I hope uh, similar to the previous one, 1A, one A cube, 1B, B cube, 1C, C cube. We had uh, the similar, I mean, uh, the fourth problem. It is similar to the fourth example. Uh, let's work out uh, here also. The determinant is equals to, so 1A, A square, because we have done it already. So, I would uh, uh, pick up the direct, uh, the process here. 1 a a square, 1 b b square, 1 c c square. As I told you that one here, ones are there. Therefore, apply the property by changing R2 like R2 minus R1, R3 like R3 minus R1. You get the determinant is equals to first row no change 1 a a square. Second row 1 minus 1 0, b minus a, b square minus a square. 0 c minus a c square minus a square and by taking common value from the second row b minus a common and from the third row you take out c minus a common from the second row if you take b minus a common it gives us 0 1 b plus a and from third row, if you take up to C minus A common, 0, 1, C plus A. And 1, A, A square. I hope you can uh, expand along the first column. Or else you can write down R3 change like R3 minus R2. Thereby, will be getting B minus A, C minus A multiply by 1, A, A square, 0, 1, B plus A. And 0, 0, A gets cancelled, C minus B, which is a determinant, lower diagonal elements are zeros, it is just a product of diagonal elements. B minus A into C minus A into C minus B. Okay, C minus B. You can take one minus common here, minus one common here, the delta is equals to A minus B, B minus C, into C minus A gives us the required answer here. A minus B, B minus A, C minus A. I hope it is simple problem. And uh, try to work out as many examples as possible by using the properties. In the first attempt itself, you may find it is difficult what uh, property of the determinant need to apply keep practicing it, you would understand from the result wise, when you think about which property to apply to get the result, you would understand how to proceed for the solving the problem. 
right now today i conclude the this lecture properties of determinant today's we learned about the properties of determinants and the problems and work out the examples from the manual ncrt problems keep doing the homework sums and submit them thank you